I hear from your question um, that I somehow adapted and changed based on my encounter with Bob Monroe. And I think I need to explain to you it's probably bigger than that. I mean, I grew up in this world. My mom talked to dead people. She used to practice levitating with her high school girlfriends. Um, this was all very regular stuff to me. So when I found myself in the army and opened this book by Putoff and Targ saying this stuff about remote viewing, it was like, well, of course I do that. They call that remote viewing? Oh, I didn't understand that. So this is all... Old school. Yes, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, isn't that interesting you have a name for this, you know, kind of a thing. So, um, and I have many, many experiences myself, many wonderful hemisync experiences myself. But your question is very interesting because Bob Monroe, who grew up as a boy, went to college, went to New York, became a successful businessman in New York, he probably didn't know consciously in his head he was going to change the world. He probably didn't realize that his movement would be one spoke in the wheel of the evolution of human consciousness. So those are things we think about in a conscious level. You know, you think, well, I'm going to go do this now, and I'm going to do this now, and I have these plans. But there's probably a better, bigger scheme going on than we consciously realize from moment to moment. Bob always looked at me because I was into computers and collecting data and measuring brain waves and everything as being the big thing in, in his own conscious mind. And he'd come to me and he said, what do you have to tell me today? You know, well, 87% of this and divided by two and this. And so when Bob died, um, my first experience of him was I had a warning screen flash up on my old 386 computer that said, no end to data. That isn't a screen that's in the software package. So I said, hi, Bob, <laughs> push the escape key. You know, so he came to me in a way that I would recognize. One other experience of him, and this is, well, actually, I'll, I'll talk about participants' experiment experiencing him too. But a, a personal experience that I can personally testify to is that the Roberts Mountain Retreat campus up on the hill, uh, there was a time that I went up there and I was, I was preparing the area to receive some visitors and I was going to give the visitors a tour. And here I'd driven all the way up on the hill and I didn't have a key to get in the door. And Bob Monroe spoke to me in as clear a voice as listening to you and said, the key is on the window sill. And I just said, oh, good. And I walked over to the window sill, picked it up off the window sill, and opened the door, and the people drove up in the car, and it was fine. Now, I wasn't, you know, on my knees, oh, my goodness, I just had this wonderful experience. Oh, this is really spooky, you know, and everything. It was regular to me. It was ordinary. It was okay, <laughs> you know. It wasn't any big deal. Other people have had experiences with Bob. Um, people who come through our programs and who never met Bob. Bob died in 95. It's now 2008. People come through the programs about a thousand a year. And sometimes they'll come out of one of their experiences and people are sitting in this room where I am right now. And they're sharing, well, during my experience, this happened. And I found myself, you know, walking along and this happened and so forth. And every now and then there's someone who comes down and said, well, I had an experience, but I don't understand it. And we say, well, tell us a little bit about it. He says, well, there was this man. Yes. Well, it was very funny because he was carrying a very small little dog. And... Bob had a dog called Steamboat, which he just loved, and it was, he was very close to this little dog called Steamboat. So we leaned forward and say, well, tell me more about this. What did this man say to you? You know, and we're expecting this proclamation of the knowledge of the universe. And 
he said, well, this guy said I should have fun. And we're like, okay, is there anybody else who would like to share? <laughs> and that, that's Bob. I mean, in, in everything they did around here and when he would talk to people, he'd say, you know, this is supposed to be fun, learning all this stuff and discovering who you are. And so when we get a little message like that, it wasn't the proclamation and the ultimate secrets to the universe. It was just, you know, as I'm saying those words, maybe that is the ultimate secret to the universe. <laughs>